Hi there folks, my name's Novaween24 from msflights.net. So today I'm back with another little tutorial. So this time we're going to be talking about flight planning. So folks, uh, we're going to be here in FSX Team Edition today. Uh, now this, these lessons are also perfectly suitable to FSX Classic as well. Um, but yeah, so to just sort of give it a preface of the lesson. Um, so, as I said, uh, flight planning is available in FSX, um, but the default flight planner is, shall we say, rather limited. Uh, so, uh, pretty much all you can do is you can go, you can choose a departure, choose the destination airport, and that's kind of pretty much it. Uh, so, VFR is, you know, that's it, and IFR does use your VORs and stuff like that, but then you, pretty much your only choices are direct GPS, low altitude, high altitude airways, or VOR to VOR. Um, pretty much it's only by default it's just the direct GPS um, so let's say for example we want to go to uh, we want to go to Redcliffe so we'll start at Redcliffe yep uh, and then we want to go to uh, let's say we want to go to where can we go let's, let's, I think it's, uh, let's say the okay so I'm gonna go, go up to Rockhampton so this, you know, not that too far away uh, Okay, so we go, okay, so we want to go, so we're going to be flying VFR, yep, and, well, we're in a, going to be flying a Cessna, so we're not going to need airways, either low or high altitude, so pretty much our only choices really are either direct or VOR to VOR. So, what we can do, so let's go, so direct GPS, and then you click find route, and that's it, there you go, done, and, yeah, kind of, bit of a, that, that's kind of it, and, it's a bit annoying, really. Uh, or you can go, oop, or you can go, let's just bring that back up. Red, yeah. And we'll go to BRK. BRK. Alright. So if we go VOR to VOR, then the route is very similar. It just chucks in your VORs, and that's it. Now, it doesn't really give us an option if we want to say we want to go, no we don't want to go that way, we want to go having a look on the coast. Yeah, you know, we want to have a look at all the coastline, the islands and stuff like that, that's what we want to do. So it's very limited with the options that you've got available, which is, as I say, it's a bit of a shame really. So, what do we do instead? Alright, what we do instead is that you can use some, some of the great third party tools that are out there. Now the one that I highly recommend to everybody is Plan G. Now, Plan G by Tim Arnott is a very is a free piece of software. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. It is um, it's won multiple awards. Had a lot of great feedback. If you haven't heard of it, you really want to look into it because yeah, it is absolutely incredible. Um, so this is a free piece of software. Uh, this one is available from tasoftware.co.uk. Uh, so Tim Arnott makes it, as I said, makes it available as um, freeware. Uh, you can donate to support, which I encourage you, you know, not so much as I encourage you to do, but you know, seriously consider it. Uh, and he's got the versions available for Windows, so you know, Windows 7 and 8, and all Windows X, so Windows Vista and above, or Windows XP. Um, so I won't go in too much detail of you know some of the features and cool stuff like that that you can get from Plan G, but I just want to show you some basic flight planning. All right. So to give you an idea, uh, where we're starting. So we're starting down here at Redcliffe. Cool. And we want to get to. We want to get up to Rockhampton. So that's up here. But we don't want to go inland or direct. We want to go maybe take a couple of stops along the way and look at the fun stuff. So all we can do is we can go down here. We can go, so we go right click on the airport here, go start flight plan. Now we're going to fly, I would like to fly over Bribey Island. So I can just go add user waypoint to plan. And let's quickly show this one over here. So let's go up here, plan. Make that a bit smaller. So you can actually see your flight plan being built as you go along. Okay. So go in here. So we're going to go over Caloundra. It's got a nice little air museum there. Right. We're going to go fly just up past Pras, Maruchidor, past Coulomb. Get the idea? Um, so yeah, you can actually go up and you can go see the things that you want to see and do the flight plan that you want to fly. So if you want to say, okay, so here we go from Marish So say, let's say that we go up here, we want to stop at Harvey Bay. 
So we want to stop for a quick fuel and a rest break and you know maybe a hundred dollar hamburger. Uh, do, 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 do. We can go up here. We can go up to Harvey Bay. Now the cool thing is he does have also your waypoints as well, so your actual intersections and stuff like that. So you can actually sort of log those onto your plan as well. So say so we can get a nice lineup. We'll go uh, the intersection there and we'll add Harvey Bay. Cool. So now we can go to the airport, we can stop there, have our lunch, you know, have a bit of fun. Then we'll head up to Bundaberg. Now we might go direct to we might go direct to Bundaberg so we can pick up some ginger beer. Now this also gives you a lot of ability, so you can actually add things like add your NDB. So we can add our NDB to the plan so we know what the um, what the frequency is going to be that we want to tune our nav radio to if we don't want to look at our GPS. I'm going to add our airport. And then from here we're going to head up to Head up past the National Park here. Head over Agnes Water, the old of 1770. And yet, no, legit, that is actually a town, folks. That is a legit town. Then we'll go up here, take another stop up at Gladstone uh, before we go on to our final distance, Rockhampton. So, like that. We'll add the VOR as well. And then we'll fly on to Rocky. So we'll go through, we'll intersect with the uh, intersections here. And then we'll fly into Rocky as well. So we'll, And the VOR, so we've got a reference point as well to that one. Alright, so, now as you can see, if we zoom out a bit here, we can actually see we've got the whole flight plan. So, now instead of just being taken to two main VORs before we go up to, on the way out to Rockhampton, we now actually get to go see some sites, you know, get a couple of stops along the way, and we can actually, you know, enjoy ourselves and, and get a bit more out of our flight plan. So this is one of the tools that I really want to go through with this one, is that it really does give you more, so much more, uh, when you just do this little bit of extra flight planning. Uh, you know, you can just fly with just sort of VFR and flight and see what we find along the way, but it's nice to, to know what's coming along the way, and let's be honest, pilots, do actually do these kind of plans. You, you do get ready for this kind of stuff if you're planning for days flying. So this is a great way to actually do that and actually get the experience and actually go through and, as I said, see what you want to see. When people do group flights as communities as well, this is generally this is what they're going to be doing. It's not very rarely going to be uh, just GPS direct airport to airport. It's going to have some form of sort of side trip along the way. So we can see here that we've got our flight plan. So we've got all the little waypoints and stuff like that. Now what we need to do is now the f we need to save it as a file format now that FSX can read. So what we want to do here is we want to go to File and you want to go to Export. So the great thing about Plan G is it does support multiple simulators as well. But we're going to just stay. Obviously we're focusing on FSX, so we're going to go Flight Simulator X10 Export. Okay. Now this is the one's probably difference that you want to note here between FSX uh, Classic and FSX Steam, especially if you're using a dual install. Uh, if you just got Steam Edition or just got Box Edition, then you'll be saving it to your documents uh, and you'll be doing it in your Flight Simulator X files. If you're running a dual install of Steam and a standard one, you will be needing to go to the Steam Edition files, so you need to save it in there. Now, of course, you can name it to whatever you want, so let's do it as to a... Uh, tutorial flight plan. There we go. Alright, so we're going to save that one in here. So that's done. Alright, so we're going to minimize that now. So now we're going to go back to our FSX. We're now going to go back to flight planner, but this time instead of just doing this, we're going to go load. And here we can see, there it is. There's the one that we've done before. So there we are, we've got our starting airport, Redcliffe, we're going up to Rockhampton, fantastic. And then we click OK. Now it will ask you this, is up to you or not? Um, just bear in mind, if you say yes to this, if it's got a location, like for this game example, it's got runway 7, uh, then it will move you to that as well. Uh, now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to quickly jump in here, we're just going to change that to parking 1. There we go. Alright, so, got our Cessna. It's all, we'll assume it's all fueled up. Let's jump in and I'll show you how to load there. So, because you've loaded the flight plan there at the start, it'll automatically be preloaded into your GPS. 
uh, and into your uh, kneeboard. All right, here we are all loaded into Redcliffe. Now, this uh, airport, by the way, is by uh, Orbix, one of their freeware airports. So, uh, yeah, highly recommended to grab this one. Very nice airport. All right, so, well, we're going to look at the scenery later. Anyway, so we go down here. So we've got it there. Now, if we go to our GPS, we can see that our flight plan's already been loaded in and it's already set, ready to go. So if we set our, we can set our autopilot. So if we set our autopilot to nav GPS, uh, well, from nav to GPS, we'll be able to send our aircraft on its merry way and just enjoy some sightseeing. Right, drop that on there. Uh, also, if you have a look on your kneeboard, okay, your navigation does list all the waypoints there as well, so it gives you, a, just as in the standard format that we see in FSX, so again, you can refer to it along the way, all that kind of fun stuff as well, so there you go. As I said, it's it's a pretty important tool, um, a lot of it, as I said, the, the default flight planner is leaves quite a lot to be desired. Uh, however, if you especially for the sort of shorter, you know, sort of low altitude kind of hops and stuff like that, so this is really going to give you uh, a lot more power, a lot more things that you can do, uh, a lot more tools at your disposal. So, uh, highly recommend that you look at that tool. Um, you can, there are other ones available out there. Um, Sky Vector, for example, helps you build a flight plan, uh, but it won't, as far as I'm aware, won't save it in a format that FSX can read. So it's or just a reference for you to put on your own uh, real-world uh, kneeboard, because so, it is actually used by pilots as well. Anyway, folks, uh, that pretty much wraps up this tutorial today. Uh, thanks very much for tuning in. Uh, my name's been NovaWing24 from msflights.net. I uh, hope you've uh, learnt something in, or this has helped you in some way for these tutorials. And uh, don't forget, you can always find out uh, more of what's happening in Simulation World by heading over to msflights.net. And you can also look on here on the channel for more tutorials. And you can always get more assistance by joining us on the forums and, of course, on our team's fleet, uh, msflights.net. All right, folks, thanks very much for tuning in. Take care, safe skies to all, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.